Hello traders and investors, this is Corey Mitchell of VantagePointTrading.com. In this video we are going to look at how to pick Canadian stocks. This video is for all you Canadian traders and investors. We're going to look at how to find investing stocks, where to get into them, how to track them so that you always have ideas about what to invest in, so that you're planning ahead so you know what price you want to get into a stock. Even if it's far away right now, you know that if it reaches a certain price, that's where you want to get in. So we're going to look at how to do that. And we're also going to look at some ideas on how you want to get out of those trades as well. So this is what we call an active management or active investing strategy. And we're going to do everything on tmxmoney.com. Great site. Uh, this is the sister site of the TSX Stock Exchange or TMX Stock Exchange. So it provides everything that we need in order to find uh, what we're looking for for investments, all the research that we need, and it also allows us to track our investments and ones that we may want to take in the future. So the first thing you are going to do is set up a profile at the top. At the top of the screen, it'll say log in. So create a profile. It's free. And then you'll be able to save your screens that I'm going to show you how to do and also set up portfolios. So as you can see here, I'm logged in so we can see my portfolios. And I just have a couple set up here. I have them diversified into or sectioned off into three different uh, industries I guess you could say I have oil and gas so a bunch of stocks here and this is just the price information of them if I click on portfolio then uh, we can see the gains or losses on these accounts so I'm going to get into this a little bit later but for now this is ultimately where we want to end up at is having a portfolio like this. Others just includes stocks that are outside of oil and gas and are not trusts. And then I have one that is for trusts and these include REITs. So we're going to look at this a little bit later on and what exactly all these numbers mean. But first of all, we actually have to find the stocks that we want to invest in. So for that, we're going to go to Invest Tools Stock Screener. Now, I have two set up already. So what I ideally like to look for is a stock that pays a dividend. That way, the stocks I like to buy are always at depressed prices, meaning they've fallen. I'm looking to get them at low value prices. So when they offer a dividend, it makes me check a few things. For one, I'm looking to make sure they're still profitable. And two, even if the stock doesn't rebound right away, at least they're paying me a dividend so I'm making at least something on that trade while I'm waiting for it to bounce higher. So in order to look for these stocks, uh, this is one I have set up. So I'd encourage you to set up something similar to this. So we have exchange equal to Toronto Stock Exchange for Canadian stocks. Share price, I put greater than or equal to one. Uh, this could be maybe dropped to 50 cents or so, but ideally I'm not looking to trade penny stocks or invest in penny stocks or highly speculative stocks as the next one also will filter out. So I want market capitalization of at least 100 million. Market capitalization is simply the share price multiplied by how many shares are outstanding. So at least at 100 million it shows it's a decent sized company. It's not going to likely go away overnight. It could, but uh, this is not the end all be all of filters, this $1 and 100 million for market capitalization, but it does filter out a lot of small companies which I'm not really interested in investing in. Next one is earnings per share. I want to make sure that they're actually profitable. So earnings per share greater than zero. 30 day average volume greater than 50,000. I want to make sure that I can actually get into and out of the stock in a relatively timely fashion. If you have less than 50,000 shares, you could end up uh, getting stuck with that for longer. If there's just no volume and you want to get out, you won't be able to. Current dividend yield, as I mentioned, I like to have a dividend yield simply because I'm getting paid no matter what. 
as long as I'm in that stock and as long as the company keeps paying that dividend. So I'm looking for a current dividend yield of 5% or greater. I should point out uh, there is sometimes where I may drop this. For example, when a company is very profitable, they tend to increase their dividends. As a stock price falls or if earnings drop, they decrease their dividend. So, for example, in 2015, we had a lot of oil stocks collapse, which means a lot of the companies that were paying dividends, they're still profitable, but they stopped paying the dividend. So, current dividend yield lets you know if they're paying a dividend now, but it doesn't let you know if they used to pay a dividend. And sometimes that's more important because even though they stop paying the dividend right now, if they go back to paying the dividend once economic conditions improve, then you want to still buy those stocks. So this requires a little bit of extra homework, but current dividend yield is uh, the best filter we have for this. And then I have another filter which I look through, which just lets me know what stocks are at good prices, and then I can go back, research a little bit more, and see if they paid a dividend yield in the past. Uh, for those who don't know, dividend yield is the dividend amount. So let's say a company pays a $1 dividend a year and the stock's trading at 10 bucks. The dividend yield is the dollar amount of the dividend divided by the sh current share price. So a $1 dividend divided by a $10 uh, share price would be a 10% dividend yield. As stock prices fall, yields go up, assuming the dividend stays the same. And as stock prices rise, yields go down. So when you're buying a stock at a depressed price, normally you can get a great dividend yield as well as a great price on the stock. So it's a win-win. Sector, I put energy here, but this could actually be any of uh, the sectors. Or you could just take this out completely if you want to search for stocks in any category. So energy is what I'm most familiar with, but by all means, you could just X this out if you want to focus, uh, or if you want to focus on the entire TSX, or if you want to just focus on stocks in a certain industry, then you would put this in here. So right now I have it set to energy, but you very well could just delete this criteria altogether. So then we click run screen and we don't get uh, too many results which is actually a good thing. So I know that there's a few of these stocks that are on my portfolio list that I either own or am trying to get into. So a few of these include Mullen Group, Freehold Royalties, So now I'm going to go through the process. We have the results, but this doesn't mean every stock on this list I want to buy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through, and there's a few things that I can do in order to find out exactly where I want to buy these stocks. So one way, we're in 2015, so not too long ago, seven years ago, we had the big crash of 2008. 2008 gave us a pretty good idea of where stocks will go when things get really bad. So we can see here, uh, MTL, Mullen Group, moved down to about the $8 mark uh, in 2008. And we're a little bit higher than that right now, 14 bucks. So if this gets down into anywhere in this area here between about uh, 9 and 10 bucks or even 8 bucks, this is, this is where I want to buy that stock. You can also think they are paying a dividend of $0.10 cents monthly per share. So you factor that in, that's $1.20 uh, dividend per year. If you can pick that up at 10 bucks, you're looking at a 12% dividend yield, which is pretty nice just for holding the stock. That's assuming they continue to pay that dividend. So this is one way that I'll potentially look for opportunities. Now things in companies do change over time, so in a little bit I'm going to talk about uh, a different scenario where let's say uh, we don't have a major low that we can see like we did here in 2008 in the stock we're looking at, or maybe it's just gone up straight for 
20 years. So there's no real uh, benchmark to compare it to where it really fell like it did here. So I always like at a major collapse in the stock price and where it went. And that gives me an idea of where I may want to get in if such an event occurs again. And in 2015, we are seeing a big sell-off in oil, similar to what we saw in 2008. So it's a comparable type economic, comparable economic conditions. So I can use it as sort of a proxy for where I want to get it. So this is one method. So that's MTL looking to get in, you know, down here in the eight, nine. And uh, let me just pull up. If I pull out my portfolio here, what I do is each time I come up with a stock that I want to trade, even if it's just an idea, I'll put it down, I'll create a portfolio, I'll show you how to do this in a second. MTL, so I put here cost per share. In my portfolio, I don't put in... Uh, I don't care what the price is trading at now. I put in the price I want to buy it at or that I did buy it at. Uh, so ideally, the price you want to buy it at should be pretty close to the actual price you buy it at. So here I put MTL, 10 bucks, And this either lets you know if you got in at 10 bucks, either how much you're on side or off side. Or if you're not into the stock yet, it lets you know how far away from your entry point it is. So let's say you wanted to buy this at 10. It lets you know that it's got to drop about 39% in order to get to that price. So in this case, you wouldn't put an order out yet. If you have money sitting in your investing account or your RSP, whatever account you're using, no reason to put out this order quite yet. But say FRU, looking to get in around 970, it's only 10% away, so whether you're, if you're looking to get in at that price, right now you'd want to have an order out there because the price is pretty close. The current market price is pretty close to the entry point you want. So what I'm not recommending any of these trades for you. This is just uh, my own research. If you know, this is not investment advice. So let's go back. Let's look at another one: freehold royalties. Again, an oil stock, so we can look at oil. Oil collapsed in 2008, 2009. We are seeing a similar event here, trading very close to where it did at the 2008 bottom. The 2008 bottom gives us a bit of a proxy to compare current market conditions to. How bad did it get in 2008? Well, we went down to about 8 bucks. So if we can pick up in this between $10 and $8 area, Based on a long-term investment, if we see this sort of similar structure play out again, very good uh, potential return. And we also have a decent dividend year, <coughs> $0.07 cents a month. So uh, you can multiply that $0.07 cents times 12 months and then divide it by whatever your entry price is, and that will give you your dividend yield. So the dividend yield is 7.8% right now. But if we get in lower down here at around uh, 9 bucks or... 10 bucks, then that yield will creep up a little bit. One thing you want to look at too, as I mentioned, historical dividend yield is important, not just the current yield. So we can see when we go to dividends on freehold royalties, they've been dropping their dividend as throughout 2015 because they've been less profitable because of oil dropping. So that's actually a good sign. They want to keep cash in the company. But they used to pay a 14 cent dividend. If you own this stock at 10 bucks and they go back to paying a 14 cent dividend, your dividend yield is going to double compared to what it is now. Because right now they're paying 7 cents, but they used to pay 14 cents. So as economic conditions improve, if you're holding that stock, your dividend yield is going to double if they go back to that old. So that's something you really want to look for as well. Is what have they typically paid when times are good and what do they pay when times are bad? So even though they could drop this to zero, yet in the future, if they go back to paying a dividend, you want to look at what they used to pay and that gives you a good idea of what you can expect possibly in the future uh, when economic conditions improve. So this dividend yield here, 
that is the published 7.8% is actually a little bit deceiving because if this company starts to see improving earnings again, that could easily double to 14% and if you get in at a better price, your dividend yield could be 16, 17, 18%. So those are things you want to look for, and what I do is I write down uh, on a piece of paper, just and I have it by my desk at all times, and I add stocks to it, what the stock I'm interested in, my entry point, where do I want to get in, then I write the dividend yield down for the price that I want to get in at, then I write down, so I write down the current dividend yield, and I also write down what the dividend could be based on what they used to pay when conditions were better. Because since we're holding the stock in anticipation that it's going to go up, that means likely earnings are going to improve and they're going to revert back to paying that higher dividend. So you want to write down the current dividend yield plus what the dividend yield could be. And unfortunately there's no screen for or stock filter uh, as we were looking at here that's going to filter for what a dividend could be. That has That's the manual work that you have to put into. Then beside that, on my piece of paper, I also write down where I want to get out. So let's look at that aspect. So again, MTL. What I'll do in this is since this is an oil and gas stock, it makes it somewhat easy because most of these stocks will track oil quite closely. So you gotta have some idea of where are you what's your expectation of the price of oil if you're going to be trading a stock like FRU or uh, other stocks that are related like Crescent Point Energy let's take a look at that one so again energy related back in 2008 trading well below where uh, it went we're down trading in 2007 levels so you know, being able to pick up the stock anywhere in this area, 15 bucks or below, is a pretty good deal if you believe uh, that oil is going to recover, which it did in 2009, and the stock also recovered, resulting in a two or three times uh, return on your money. So if we get in 15 ish or 14, 13, whatever your established target is. I pick a general area and then I just throw an order in that area. So typically if I do create a uh, list that I publish on the website, what I'll do is I'll just say, you know, buy below $14. And I won't probably give an exact price because different people are going to be coming to the site and the stock might be trading at $13.79 one day or $14.23 the next. So it really doesn't matter the exact price when we're talking about these long-term trades where you could make two or three hundred percent. The 20 cent difference in the price on a $15 stock isn't going to make a huge difference. And I have no idea what the exact bottom or where this is going to bottom out is going to be. So it, this isn't a prediction. All I know is that this is the general area I want to get in. And if I can, I'm happy. So let's look at what the upside potential is here. If we can get in around this $13 mark where we kind of bottomed out here in August, uh, we did go a little bit lower than 13, but definitely a good price down here below 15, 14, 13 dollars. The potential profit, even if we don't get to these former highs when oil was trading around 100 bucks, even if it gets up to about $80, $80 oil, this would bring Crescent Point back into this probably $40 region. So depending on where you get in at 13 bucks, you're going to make 300% uh, return or 200% return. You're going to triple up uh, on your money. So you're buying at 13, and if you can get out at 39 or 40. You've made three times your money. So again, here dividend yield currently 7.51%, but based on the historical dividend, they have been cutting, cutting, cutting. So if we go back to this 23% or sorry, 23 cent dividend per month, that's more than two times what the current dividend yield is at 10 cents. So if you get this stock when it's low, you hold it for a while. Maybe you get this 10 cent dividend. Maybe they cut it to zero. We don't know. 
But in the future, if this company recovers, we can expect that, hey, probably they will go back to this 23% or 23 cent per month dividend, and our dividend yield is going to be much higher than what we currently are getting. So that's something to keep in mind. So that's how we look at getting in, getting out. Again, I'm not looking at an exact specific price level. Uh, I usually go for just round numbers and then put out my order within a few cents of it. So if I want to get in around 14, I'll put my order out at 14.05 or 13.95, very close to that round number, and then look to get out at a big round number within a few cents of it. So that's how we get in oil stocks. That's why I generally look at these because they are correlated to oil. You can look at oil, where oil was when the stock traded at a certain level. It gives you a bit of a proxy to compare prices to. So we're at $35 oil right now. If oil goes back up to 60, you can look at where the stock would be if the price goes up to 80 you can look where the stock would be so at about $80 oil uh, we should see Crescent Point Energy up at around the $40 mark so that provides a good exit point if you think $80 oil is a good exit point and I'm not telling you what you should believe ultimately you have to make your own uh, decisions but this is how I go through my process so let's go through one more of the stock screeners. So we looked at the dividend one. Then I also look for values. So this is a little bit different. If you want, I do have a dividend yield in here. You can just click it out. Just get totally rid of it if you want to find stocks which may not have a dividend yield right now but still present a good value. Then you can go through them manually and see which ones may potentially go back to paying a dividend when conditions improve. So the overall basis of the strategy, remember we're buying stocks that are depressed a little bit, maybe in a bit of a bad time, but the potential's there, they're good companies, they still have earnings, they're still profitable uh, that we can pick up and buy. So exchange, again. Uh, so this is a, a different way to look for stocks. Let's get rid of this dividend yield for right now because, as I mentioned, it's not always the most reliable signal because dividend yields do change. So exchange TSX share price greater than $1. Again, this could be $0.50, cents, but I don't really like looking for penny stocks. 10-day average volume greater than 50 k We want to be able to get in and out. Price to earnings ratio. So this means if we're between 0 and 5, it means that the stock price divided by earnings is less than 5, meaning if earnings are a dollar, the stock price can't be trading at more than $5. And that's historically quite low. So a price to earnings ratio of 5 to 1 historically is quite low and provides a good potential uh, upside because it shows investors have for whatever reason stepped away from that stock doesn't mean every stock that has a five to one or less price to earnings ratio is good but it does give us a good starting point we want it greater than zero because that shows that at least the company had earnings price to tangible book value this just the book value of the company is how much their assets are worth in summary. So a price to tangible book value, this just says the price is no more than five times what the assets of a company are worth. This is a little bit of downside protection in case the company had to go bankrupt. You at least know that they have some assets that are worth something that they could sell and at least you're going to get something back probably on your investment. So let's run this. Not too many results, we only get eight. So again, this would be one that you'd have to go through, look, see if any of these suited your criteria. So let's look at yellow pages. This one not on my list of interested stocks I'm interested in. 
no yield, and we don't have a lot of price history. Started uh, 2013, trading a little bit high. Uh, historically, not a whole lot to go off of here. So this, not what I'm interested in. I like stocks where I can at least see about 10 years worth of price history. So here, very different looking chart. Not a whole lot to go off again here. Maybe we'd want to buy this down here where it bottomed out in 2008. It's up at 15 bucks though, so not a lot to go off of. One thing we can do is go to charting. So when a chart doesn't make sense like that, it may be because earnings jumped a lot over the last 10 years. So go to earnings, click this earnings, and build chart. So we put 10 years, one month uh, for the frequency and earnings. Click that. So to show you a chart, so before this we have no earnings information. So this is also one we're not interested in. Let's look at an oil stock that showed up here. view of the chart can it give us any information going back to 2008 yeah a little bit but ideally we want to see how the company survived that 2008 crash because it lets us know hey uh, if they survive 2008 hopefully they'll survive again so they were not around during that 2008 crash so again this would be one I'd probably skip so this is just how you, then you go through each one of these stocks individually. So the other screener had a little bit more for us to go through. So let's go through, now that you know how to find some of the stocks, go through, look through the dividends, what the dividend yield could potentially be, where you want to get in, where you want to get out. Let's look at building the actual portfolio. So we're going to go edit portfolio. So what I do is when I find a stock that I'm interested in, I put the symbol in. Total shares, you put one share. Cost per share, you want to put the price that you want to get in at. Date doesn't really matter, fees don't matter, and then click Save Changes. As I mentioned, and whenever it comes up, you, it might be just be your watch list. Click on Portfolio so that you can see the prices you input. And as I mentioned before, this just lets you know where these stocks are right now relative to the price you wanted to get in at or the price you got in at. So this is very different than what most people do is they pick a stock that they want to invest in, then add it to their portfolio, the price they wanted in at or got in at. Whereas I'm saying find the price you want to get in at first wait for that entry point and only then uh, do you actually buy that stock. So for example this one WCP I put get in at around two bucks and it's trading at 710 right now. So this is really far away from my potential entry point. Yet I put it down anyway. Let's take a look at it. Because up here in 2006, it was trading at 12 bucks, and I'm sure no one expected at that time that it would fall to two bucks. Just as no one probably expected that bought it at 18 that it would fall to 10. So people who are buying it at 10 probably won't expect it to fall back to three or four or two. So I put down the price I'm interested in, and then that way, if this ever does happen to come down to that price, I know that I want. So I always have stocks entering the area even though it may seem absurd now that they reach that price remember when a stock sells off you have no idea how far it could go and I'm gonna be the one that snatches it up when it comes to those levels 
So some of these other ones, they're within about 60%. So when a stock gets within about 20% or 30% to my entry price, that's when I'll put out my order in my RSP or my TSFA or whatever trading account you're using. But there's no point tying up capital when putting out an order when the stock's 300% away from your entry price. So some of these may need to be adjusted. So WCP, let's take a look at it. So I wanted to get in at two bucks, but that might actually not be realistic or the best price. So let's look at a 10 year chart, one month. So I do go through each stock on my list uh, periodically and just make sure. So initially I just put down what I see and then I go through them in more detail later. So we can see in 2008, you can see what the earnings were for this company, what they were as the stock price rose. And what they are now. So this gives you a bit of an idea of what sort of conditions the company was facing. So they were in negative territory here. Lots of, you know, minus 10 cents per share, minus 8 cents, minus 12 cents. So here we're seeing some positives. Now we're starting to see some negatives. So, you know, it, will it drop to 2? I have no idea. Will it drop to 3? I have no idea. But I do know that if it does drop to 2, it's definitely a company I'm interested in buying at that level. Some people may be interested in buying it up here. That's not my strategy. I'm waiting for rock bottom prices and by always having a list of stocks which are potentially trading or which having a list of stocks that I want to buy at rock bottom prices and what a rock bottom price is based on some historical tendencies, price earnings ratios, where they traded at during a major crash. Those give me reference points of what a rock bottom price is. I put those rock bottom prices down and I monitor where the current price is relative to those stocks. That gives me uh, always a list of stocks that I want to buy. So right now there's lots that are within striking distance. So quite a few of these I own already in this sector. Some of these other ones like potash, different types of companies, LIF, Labrador, Iron Ore. Within proximity, Russell, Metals, Transelta, all stocks that are within striking distance of an entry price that I has either already hit me or I'm have an order out and waiting to get filled at those price. Trusts, uh, to diversify a little bit, these are real estate related. So most of these, again, way far away from my entry point, but I put them down anyway, because who knows, in the future, they might drop, and then I can get in at the price I want. And currently, most of these are not close, but there are a couple, uh, NVU, Cuff. So at this point, these are stocks I'm, uh, as they get closer to my entry point, I'll put out orders in. And that's the process. And for each one of those, as I discussed, I have an entry point already entry point and exit point already in mind. So once that once I'm in that stock, I have an idea where do I want to get out. I know how much I'm going to be making if they continue the dividend. I also know how much I'm going to be making if they increase the dividend back to what it used to be if they had dropped it as the price was dropping for the stock. So that's the process I go through. There is a lot to cover. You may have to watch this a few times. But ideally, this is how you set up the portfolio. This is how you track the stocks and ultimately how you find them and how to get out of them. So I hope that helps you out. I know there's not a ton of information on Canadian stock investing, but there are some great opportunities out right, right there right now, especially since commodities have been hit so hard in 2015. So as we head into 2016, it is December 31st today, so we're heading into the new year. Hopefully this helps you out picking some uh, more profitable investments in 2016 and beyond. Cheers.